principal component analysis. This is a technique that is frequently used within data analysis when you want to examine structures of covariating variables. And this is frequently used inside of different analysis of omics techniques, the omics data as well. From linear algebra, we know that we can multiply two vectors into matrix. So uh, the matrix becomes a sort of a mixture of the elements of the two vectors. Here, uh, we ask, could ask ourselves a question, could we in any way do the opposite? Sort of say, given a matrix, could we um, uh, deduce the vec uh, two vectors U and V that could represent the matrix M? Uh, it turns out that that could be the case if there's correlation inside of this matrix and um, between variables in the matrix. And this is what we do with the technique called principal component analysis. Let's begin with a conspicuous example of correlation in a matrix. So uh, say that an effective example that you're investigating the bookkeeping for a shoe store. And, and then you notice that uh, for each customer, the variables, uh, difference in pairs of shoes in stock, difference in money in the cash register, and the variables pairs of shoes sold to a customer, and the ones difference in stock value seem to co-variate uh, strongly. And uh, so just to investigate this, you uh, write up a matrix where you have um, these four variables as rows, and the, each customer encounter um, as columns in, in this matrix. Uh, we could then use PCA to decompose this. So when we are executing um, this, uh, we could extract uh, two vectors U and V. And if we investigate those vectors, we, could we will find that um, First of all, that there is a vector u um, that seem to contain um, elements that vary in the same manner as our different variables. So the vector u captures a trend in M. Uh, for instance, we can see that um, the difference between the, the uh, third and uh, the second row uh, is changing always with, with, with a difference of 500 units in each. Um, so whenever there's a one in one in one of the the in in the, the index two, we got 500 more in the other one, and this seems to be per perfectly captured now by the vector u. When we investigate the v vector, it seems to capture the behavior of the customers. Um, it's you can see that the, the first element is twice as high as the third, uh, as the second, which and the third element is three times as high as the second. Um, so it seems like the uh, whatever the, the customer was happening was three times as big for the second customer, or for, sorry, for the third case customer than the, the second. So in general, it seems like. Um, uh, the u vector captures the relationship between customers, whereas v uh, seems to capture the vector, seems to ca catch the relations between the variables. And just to make sure here, we could recreate the, the matrix M by multiplying u and v. So here you go, and the vector M is recreated from this. There is a closely related technique, um, or rather a technology to do PCA called um, singular value decomposition. Um, it's basically using different um, tricks from linear algebra to do approximately the same trick. So our matrix M could have as well been divided using um, one of the NumPy's routines, uh, SVD, singular value decomposition. So when executing this, you can then um, extract vectors fr from this as well. And they 
uh, will not be identical to, to the U and V we had before. However, they share the same properties. They're sort of showing a direction in, in space. Um, and the just as, as before, the relationship between the different elements there is sort of reflecting the um, the, the relations between the, either the customers or the variables that we measure for the customers. Um, and in this case as well, we can see that um, if we want to reconstruct um, a matrix from this, we we, uh, we need to multiply these um, two vectors together with a factor S as well. That's part of the linear algebra there. Um, so if we do that, we can still reconstruct a matrix M from, from um, just the multiplication of these three entities. This analysis can be extended as well. Uh, once you have um, removed the principal components from the matrix X, uh, you can calculate the so-called residues, so what's remaining, so to say, from removing the principal components. So if you subtract U times V from M, you get the residues from, from this first operation. Here I've used a notation of one here for indicating these first principal components as we calculated. Um, well, if you have done that, you can get, you get a new matrix, which you can as well calculate principal components for. Uh, such vectors are called um, the second uh, principal components. And it turns out that we can do this over and over again and uh, we can uh, calculate as many principal components as there are um, uh, dimensions in in, 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 in in M. So now when we know this, we, we, the question is how do we compute these? Well, sklearn contains functionality that could um, directly, you just specify how many number, the number of components you want to generate. For the example before, I used uh, the number of components equals to one, and I could just increase that to two or three or four or whatever number I want to calculate. But um, even better is using single value decomposition, um, as we as well touched on previously here. Um, it turns out that single value decomposition is not just calculating the first principal component, but um, it calculates uh, several or, or all of the, the principal components you can could have for, for a matrix. So uh, it will decompose it, the, your matrix into uh, three different matrices, uh, U and S and a V matrix, uh, where uh, the S matrix is diagonal. So it just contains uh, the magnitude of each of these other principal components. Um, and uh, you, furthermore, you can interpret each um, column and row in, in, in the U and V uh, matrix according to the following scheme. So we can first we can interpret the the columns in the U matrix as a principal component. Um, so the first row, uh, first column in, in the U matrix will be the first principal component, the second column, the second, etc. etc. Um, similarly the rows of V, um, they are um, the principal component as well uh, in the other direction. So the the first principal component is given by the first row, the second by the second row, etc., etc. For the example, before we were extracting just the first row and the first column, um, just because we just were caring about the first components at that case. However, um, we as well have this uh, matrix S that is uh, a diagonal matrix again. Uh, so the L, the diagonal is filled, the rest of the elements are zero. And um, each of these elements are giving the magnitude now of the, the, uh, the, 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 the principal components. So it gives as well the relative importance of the different principal components this way. Volatile, um, introduces a interesting nomenclature for this that I think is helpful for understanding how to interpret this type of analysis. And that's that they call the uh, 
vectors from the eigenvectors from, from um, the U matrix. Uh, they call them eigensamples, and the um, rows from from um, the V matrix. They call them eigenyields. And uh, sometimes you hear as well left hand and right hand eigenvectors for the same um, entities. And the uh, way you should think about this is that the, the eigensamples, they are representations of combination of genes that describe how the sample vary over the genes. Um, so uh, it's sort of a typical sample in the eye of a gene. Similarly, the eigengene is a representation of a combination of samples that describe how a gene varies over samples. Um, so it, it will um, now describe how a typical gene would vary over the different samples. So you get one um, eigengene per, uh, or you got one first eigengene for, for, for each sample and one first eigensample for each gene. In the Jupyter notebook that we made for this exercise, I have put in a PCA analysis of two different lung cancer data sets. Both these are downloaded from TCGA, and one of them is a lung adenocarcinoma, and the other is a lung squamous cell carcinoma. So these are two types of cancer. Um, and uh, if we combine this into one single data set and um, uh, we can calculate the, the first principal components and if we would now uh, sort of plot these first principal components against each other we'll note now here um, for the eigengenes that is the, um, uh, the columns in the U here do we have firstly the first column in U and the second column in U um, you will see if we plot now our samples, we note that the uh, the two different cancer types, the patients from the two different cancer types, they seem to be well separated, or not well separated, but there seem to be a, a trend where um, the, the the single cell or the, the yellow patients here, they tend to, to be more high, or they seem to tend to be higher on the eigengene number one, and um, uh, there is as well a weak trend here where the, where the uh, yellow patients there are going downwards as well in on eigengene 2. The analysis allows us as well to do a second type of, of um, uh, analysis. We can plot the eigenpatients as well of, of this data. So this again is the same uh, data but seen after for of the perspective now of what would the uh, the patient look like that is would, would describe the, the variation in page per patient that would describe most of the patient and here we see the different genes now um, uh, plotted according to the eigenpatient number one and eigenpatient number two and uh, as a matter of fact we can uh, sort of now see that there's a couple of genes here that seem to describe uh, much, very much of, of variation, so we could sort of investigate now the to, the, the maximal uh, genes and minimal genes according to this. So if we first look on, on the maximal genes, we see that there's um, two, uh, for, for egg in patient number one, the direction of egg in patient number one, we see one gene SFTPB and another, uh, and the, according to other components, we see KRT17 being on top as a carotene. The same carotene as well comes up in the uh, as the most extreme uh, component when we look on the minimal uh, according to eigenpatient number one. So the minimal eigenpatient number one is as well the maximal eigenpatient number two. So um, that must be this data point up here. Um, and uh, the maximal eigenpatient number one seems to be this F SFTPB, which probably is found over here. And uh, we probably have a minimal um, eigenpatient number two somewhere here among these genes. So these would be the genes that uh, describe most of the difference between the data. Uh, please remember here that this analysis has been completely unsupervised. So we haven't had 
any I never told the we never instructed our, our algorithms to try to separate uh, this according to different patient groups or anything like that and that's great actually because it doesn't sort of this means that this algorithm is not prone to overfit in any way so we can actually do use this as an input for for further analysis we can for instance feed these two different uh, uh, this, these different directions and these different projections into uh, further classification or statistical testing, etc. So it's a very powerful type of analysis because it really doesn't cost anything in terms of, of um, uh, telling the algorithm what uh, the, the actual ground truth is or in any way. And you can as well see cases where you see an, a perfect separation between different um, uh, patient classes as well. That means that you have a, um, set up the, the you have managed to measure a difference in the, the experiment that uh, seemed to be telltale uh, by by uh, the different patient groups as well. And that's of course what you actually want to see. This is a great situation. Uh, I must emphasize though that in this case it's not for sure that this is actually what's happening. It's might as well be that uh, there's different biases in the different data sets. For instance, these data sets are probably processed uh, separately, so they've been probably been normalized probably separately, and that that's a more likely cause of the, the difference here and then the actual underlying uh, difference in, in the different cancer types.